the winter, she had strength left within her. Ground grew colder and covered in white. The words wept and shivered. They were raised for their timber. If they could, they would run for their What's up, guys? Welcome back to the home slice. <laughs> this is probably going to be the last 1,000 chop test I do for a little while, just because the the sharpening research that I've done for the last bit sort of adds up to this with chopping knives. So I figured I'd do a little bit more of an intro on this one and explain to you what's sort of going on behind the scenes in my sharpening research and where we're going to go from here. So in the beginning. I sharpened my knives either fine or with a dual grit edge. Now the fine stone that I had at the time, the King 1000 and 6000 grit Japanese water stone, actually leaves a pretty substantial foil burr at, on the 6000 grit side that's been sort of proved on the scienceofsharp.com through electron microscope imaging. Now, because of that, because of the quite substantial and large and not durable foil burr that I was leaving on my edges, I observed at that time that the dual grit edges that I sharpen actually performed better. Now, since then, I've done a lot of research and a lot of testing things out, and I've actually come to find that you can create a fine edge which doesn't have those downfalls. The first 1000 chop test that I did, I did with a dual grit edge, and the numbers jumped around a little bit, and you could see visually in the edge of the knife that there were little pockets and spots that got flattened out or broken off, and so it wore a bit unevenly, and it stayed sharp for a, a surprising amount of time, but I began to wonder, hey, is dual grit really the best for chopping? Because as we've seen on, if you've seen the Science of Sharp article on my sharpening method, dual grit sharpening, you know that the edge functions by having the coarse stone leaves a bit of rough texture in the edge finish on one side, and the fine stone actually takes the burr from the coarse stone and realigns it to the middle, and you have this little protrusion on the top of the edge that's realigned metal that's actually more thin and acute than the edge itself, and that lends itself to long-term aggressiveness. I began to worry that in a chopping application, would that whole thing actually bend over and act like more of a wire edge, um, rather than being this extension of the apex that improves wear resistance, which is what we've seen in like Pete's tests and stuff. So I began trying different things, trying to get under 100 bests on my 1095 Crovan K-Bar Becker BK7. I wasn't able to get under 100 bests, but I was able to get the edge hair whittling. So I thought, hey, we'll we'll start there. You know, we'll start with a, an edge that has such a minimized little feather burr or foil burr that it can catch into a hair. To my utter surprise, I think the foil burr did break off, but I think it left such a keen and even and durable apex because I had sharpened to these fine abrasives and it had sort of minimized the subsurface damage and movement of steel at the apex. So it removed a lot of the plastically deformed steel, the steel that had been bent and then bent back to, and changed shape. So it performed phenomenally. It totally outperformed my dual grit edge that I had previously tested to the extent that I did a thousand chops and I did like 45 smacks with this caveman baton, I like to affectionately call it. And at the end of it, it was still shaving hair easily, like easily shaving hair. So that kind of boggled my mind and I began to wonder, is it actually the fact that for chopping knives, you need to really, really minimize that subsurface damage? So that's led me to this last test. What I've done with this last test is I've got my K-Bar Becker with 
stabilized black walnut beeswax stabilized custom hand shaped black walnut handles I made. If you want to see the video on that and the debacle but ultimately fruitful um, exercise that that was, I'll try to put a link up here. And what I've done is I've I've used a denim strop on this. So the results from the hair whittling test sort of opened my eyes to the fact that if you really clean up that apex and you have a fine stone that's hard and aggressive enough but you can use really light pressure on it, it actually minimizes the, the metal that has been damaged or plastically deformed under the surface of the edge and that leads to a stronger edge which keeps sharpness in a more uniform and more effective way for chopping. So my question then was, well, would we get even better edge retention if we used a denim strop? Now a hanging denim strop, I've made a video, I'll put a link here to how to do that, will actually take and it will convex out just the very edge apex and change the angle that it's at. So then I had this like sort of debacle. I was like, well, if I sharpen it at 20 degrees, then the actual apex is going to be wider than that. And that would make the test a bit unfair because I would not be testing uniform edge angles. So I kicked the idea around a little bit and I'm, I'm also testing for like the ultimate chopping edge. So the conclusion that I came to is I think that if we use a denim strop and sharpen the exact same way, so use my kingstone still, but then clean up that edge with the Spyderco Ultrafine and then go to the denim strop and a kangaroo strop after that. What I could do is I could actually decrease the edge angle to 17 degrees rather than 20 because that little tiny bit of rounded apex is going to increase the strength back up and the edge angle between that and the hair whittling edge will be similar because the rounding introduced by the denim strop will carry each of those sides to close to that 20, de 20 degree mark. So I don't know if you can see there that it's like kind of impossible to test apples to apples when it comes to the ultimate edge angle, convex versus V-edge, because I don't know exactly what final apex edge angle is left on this. But what I have realized from my testing is that with a denim strop, you, I haven't been able to get under 100 bess, but I've been able to get a very clean apex that's really cleaned of damage. The ways that I have been able to perceive that is that I actually, when you strop it, there's a certain number of strokes. It's like between 20 and 40 strokes per side. And if you best test, the best number will go down, 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 and then it will begin to go back up. I think it's because it rounds it because you lose the aggression when it starts to go back up. It's like that keen aggressive edge you feel like goes away. It's a similar thing with the kangaroo tail that I've observed. You can do a certain number of strokes and it, it varies a little bit from steel to steel and your number gets better, 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 worse, 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 worse. And I think it's due to removal of damaged metal and foil burr on the way down to like the best hand sharpened hanging strop, best number you can get from your, given your previous sharpening job. And then once you hit that, if you continue, then they begin to worsen by rounding over that apex and getting over stropped. So I've tried to hit a happy medium here. We've got a 17 degree edge. It's been on a hanging strop to actually micro convex the apex. It's uh, it's looking pretty good. It's feeling pretty keen, but not as aggressive at that, as that hair whittling edge, which I think is gonna be a good thing for a chopping test, but we'll find out. And I've tried to give it that, that perfect number of strokes. Now it's carried this K-Bar Becker down to about 130 grams on the best machine. And while that's not under 100 grams best, I do believe that almost all of the damaged metal has been removed. It's just that my hand sharpened edge is a little bit more rounded than some of the guys you see getting under 100 best who are using like Tormex and grinders or a really big progression of expensive stones that I don't have. So this is sort of my last question. This is like, okay, for a chopping knife, finishing on that Spyderco Ultrafine with the hair whittling edge. 
is obviously giving me more consistent and better actually results than my dual grit edges. So I'm willing to switch to that. But before I start this next series where I'm gonna do a chopping tournament, I wanna make sure I have the best style of edge and with the setup that I currently have. So enough talk, we're gonna get into this thousand chop test. I'm running out of the uh, shiplap kind of pine boards that I have. They're all sort of the same boards, they're the same age, they're the same level of dustiness, but I have shorter boards this time. So we're gonna test every 100 chops on the best machine and then we're gonna graph against the two other edges how the loss of the edge apex actually went, and the winner takes all.
Okay, guys. Well, holy cow. That's awesome. Um, I think from first glance of the numbers, it only went over 300 one time for a score of 354, I believe. And uh, when I inspected the edge, there was a little bit of sap that got stuck to the, just the point where it cuts the test media that gummed it up and messed up that measurement. I did another 100 strokes and the number fell to 231 when it was cleaned up. So I think that 354 was a bit of an aberration, but I moved the knife and took another reading, uh, moved just like a quarter of an inch to avoid that spot, but still in the chopping sweet spot, and it scored 194. What does this mean? Well, I think this is the edge that I'm gonna use for all my chopping tests. Why? Because even when I was chopping really hard and going through knots at the end, and a lot of like hitting and like twisting motion when I was trying to avoid hitting the screws on the sawhorse, um, even with that really, really hard use, the number never climbed at the end. It just went up to 204, which is basically what it was at the 100 chop mark. My gosh, that's insane. So it stayed around the 200s for the whole time. Um, I've never had an edge that did that. What does this mean? This means that in a chopping test for con con uh, consistent, consistent, I can't think because I just did a thousand chops <laughs> for consistent sharpness. 17 degrees seems to be stable enough. Like it, it held up to everything I did. The cleaner the apex is, the more it has been cleaned of damaged metal, the better the results it looks like you will get. Could you get a better edge? Could I get a better edge? Um, yes, I believe you could. I am limited right now by the fact that with the borders of New Zealand being locked, shipping is uber expensive. And I, I haven't been able to get in any more stones. Like I think if you went through a greater progression, then you could probably get that even cleaner. However, I think this is really good and adequate on a, on a quite a small budget. I think I'm pretty confident that with the gear that I have and the lack of any preset sharpening system, so by hand sharpening with a relatively high skill level and um, a budget collection of stones, this is probably the best edge that I presently can make for a chopping knife. And the most important part, I think, is the denim strop. So I'll make a full tutorial where I explain how I sharpen that. Let's see how this does. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but um, take a look at all of that. That's gross, I'm sorry, but that's also proof. I can't get my phone to focus, guys. But anyway, this is all my hair. And this thing is nearly as sharp as when I started before giving it 1,000 chops and over 45 caveman batons. And that is insane. So welcome to my new recommended chopping, sharpening method. You guys have a great day. Okay, before I end the video, I just wanted to show you this because it's awesome. Look at all of this, like that board has become mulch. <laughs> it has become absolute bark chips. And then check this out, this is my sawhorse and this is the board that I screw them to to keep them in place. My depth of perception's a little off there. And this is what's left of that five foot board. <laughs> I just thought that was awesome. Okay, peace out.